Okay, guys. So this is the today's lead code weekly contest. Twenty three four twenty three. These are the four problems. Uh, first one you have to give an just a arrival time and delay time. They are asking that this time would be arrival time plus delay time. Represent that in form of basically our format where uh, uh you know our format that. There are only 24 hours and whenever like there is no 24th hour there are 23 hour and then there is again zero so that's what you have to do basically a plus b and modulo 24 you have to return the next question was this uh, some multiples given a number okay you have to find the all the multiples of uh, these number 357 in the range 1 to n so n was actually pretty small uh 10 raised power 3 so just go up to n and then you can see so you can do o n right and you can see uh, that whether the number is divided by this, 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 or this. So based on that, you do this. Uh, I think this is a lengthy code for that. But you know why some people were able to solve this question in just I think 15, 20 seconds is you know why the reason was uh, that uh, that it was really simple, right? Uh, uh, yeah, but but the thing is you don't uh, that was really uh, short also. Like you just need to do basically. I think S is important. That's important. Like. Now over here you can just write that uh, s plus equal to this number i only if you know if uh, i modulo this 3 is equal to equal to 0 or i modulo you know i modulo 5 is equal to equal to 0 or yeah somehow like that basically you can make this one like that or i modulo 7 is equal to equal to 0 you could have made it one liner then uh, plus equal to i otherwise plus equal to 0 something like that you can do so which made this question one liner and if you try to run the code it gets good and if you try to sum with the code yeah it's going good so this is one liner so again this was the number of operation to make all the elements equal to one okay okay this is the fourth question i think yeah yeah so today fourth question was also medium okay okay that's fine now uh, this is the third question sliding is a very beauty so you have been given basically this array you have been given number k and x equal to two two numbers you have been given you have to return a array array should contain how many element it would contain n minus k plus one element basically you will see the array and all sub array of this array of size k so how many sub array of size three are present in this array of size six there are only three sub arrays one two three uh, if you do this second sub array starts from the first index and third sub array starts from the third uh, second index right you cannot start a sub array with the index equal to you know 0 1 2 3 you know then it would not be a length 3 so that's why there is n minus k plus 1 uh, okay that is the thing now between uh for the sub array what you have to tell you have to tell the second uh, uh, because x is equal to 2 second is smallest number not the first smallest because the first smallest is the least number or the smallest number right is minus 3 second smallest is minus one third smallest is one you know if you look at in the ascending order it is minus three minus one one so that's why you have to return a uh, second smallest which is minus one how will you do that so basically what you can try to think is that i have a sub array like i i can extract a sub array from the array you know we know that how to have a running sub array kind of thing basically uh two pointer approach you can say or sliding uh sub array they have already mentioned sliding window approach so this is the thing now but when you get that window when you get that sub array how will you say that this is the second smallest element you know so for that you can try to sort it but that doesn't make sense because n is up to 10 is per 5 then your sub array length can go up to 10 is per 5 i don't think that sorting would work like yeah it, it looks fishy and it will get tl okay and so uh, the good approach that you have to find some good approach there has to be a good approach the good approach is there yeah so the good approach is that you know the number range is very limited so what you can do you can just do similar to that thing when you say that characters are only 26 so let me make use of that thing that let me just you know have an array of size 26 or just source or just do a basically a loop for 26 kind of thing basically over here the uh, total number of elements possible is just 100 right minus 50 to 100 50 so i did not made uh yeah i made a thing basically of size 100 i made a thing of a made a vector to basically using that space to uh, reduce the time because yeah this is that thing also with sorting we say it uh, we say it uh, i think with sort i don't know but yeah we are using that uh, space 
ठीक है सो देन वी स्टोर दिस नंबर एट अ पर्टिकुलर इंडेक्स सो लेट्स से इफ इट इज माइनस वन वी डोंट हैव माइनस वन इंडेक्स सो आई वुड स्टोर इट एज फिफ्टी प्लस माइनस वन बिकॉज द नंबर कैन नॉट एक्सीड फिफ्टी यू नो दैट इज ऑल्सो द थिंग सो फिफ्टी प्लस फिफ्टी इज इक्वल टू हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टी प्लस फिफ्टी इक्वल टू जीरो सो माइनस वन विल बी गेट स्टोर एट फिफ्टी वन राइट नो फिफ्टी नहीं फोर्टी नाइन ओके फोर्टी नाइन सो दैट इज अ थिंग फिफ्टीन माइनस वन सो हाउ वी आर स्टोरिंग दैट फिफ्टी प्लस ए ऑफ आई सो माइनस वन इज स्टोर एट फोर्टी नाइन now whenever i see that okay this is a good window basically when your size is uh, like k minus k when their size is k so then you can just uh, run a basic not run a basically yeah when your size is k now you this is the square that you got and then search for the value which is the second smallest how would i search it i just uh, i did an iteration over 0 to 100 over the array and then find out like how many elements are particular you know when do i exceed the limit of x element okay so if you see in the first element skip the first element second element just go on till you find the x element from the starting that means that this is the x the smallest number right because the number are also like minus 50 is at 0 minus 40 is at 10 minus 30 is at 20 so this is always an increasing order so then you just say that uh, some there can be multiple uh, i number uh, multiple a uh, frequency of a particular number like minus 46 can be three times also so uh, at only one place we are storing three you know so x plus equal to this the frequency and whenever the x goes beyond x1 which is uh, yeah x1 goes beyond x which is your limit so you will say okay this is the number that i found and this is the number that i want to have okay this is x is smallest number just check it if it is a uh, negative you know if it is like uh, x minus is it less than 50 then you push that otherwise you push zero they have mentioned the question if it is negative then zero uh, otherwise zero okay so yeah and that's how somehow you will do this and return r so you, i i did q minus 50 i did not did q why because obviously i stored initially plus 50 so i have to do minus 50 q is basically index so there i am using the basically space for getting a particular you know reducing the time complexity by using the space complexity because this o100 is constant so this is n into 100 that's fine again and yeah that's about it you have a uh, just you know, remove the ith element so this was the most intuitive question i would say of this uh, contest other intuition was just to use you know that i do not know what name is that but when you do try to do sorting in kind of of n basically by using space yeah and uh, because the space was constant uh, because the yeah, range of the number is very limited <clears throat> this is the fourth question i thought it is a hard one so that's why like you know there is a mental thing but but yeah it's a fine 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 and when you get the approach it is fine okay and the minimum number of operation to make all the elements equal to 1 given an array given uh, you have to return an integer the number of operation required to make all the elements equal to 1 how you can make elements equal to 1 you can take gcd of some elements so when you take gcd we know that element decreases so the number can be you know uh, or obviously if the one number is 1 the gcd with any other number would give us one okay so uh, you have to make let's see how this uh, can we can make it equal to all ones when you take 3 4 the gcd equal to one so insert one where where do uh, in uh, they are saying that insert any uh, at any place either numsi or numsi plus one you can insert at the place of 3 or 4 i inserted at the place of 1 uh, sorry 3 and then uh, you can take the gcd of 1 6 and 1 4 they will give you 1 1 and similarly 1 2 so basically uh, what i am saying that the logic i am coming to the logic of this problem that you want at least one one to be in your array okay if there is already a particular one or if there are already some number of ones in the array then your job is easier <coughs> you can say all answer all is possible and you can just directly return the value of answer so i am saying that c is equal to 0 this is the count of how many ones are there if there are some number of ones so i am storing it if this is equal to one so c plus plus give me the count of 1 and if c is some number okay if it is not 0 if it is some number return n minus c that is your answer because uh, you can use this one to make some other number which is not 1 in one operation okay in one operation you will make that number equal to 1 because 1 and gcd of that number will shall be 1 okay that's fine now when the answer is not possible when the gcd is not 1 okay when the gcd is 2 uh, no matter how much you try you cannot make you know basically at every element you try you can take all the element combination permutation but you cannot give uh, get one as a gcd so you can never get a one one single one and then how can you get a complete one so okay so that's the thing so if gcd is greater than one return minus one this is the counter this is the main part when uh, you know the this question is divided into three parts so first part when not possible second part when you can directly see the answer 
third part is basically when you have to basically find how to get a one because currently there is no one but you can get one because in this area also there is no one but three and four can give you one one right and then you can make all the ones when you get a particular one so you have to basically uh what i'm saying that you have to just reach to the particular one just a one a uh, single one you have to make and then you can say okay that's the this is the number of steps i would need to make all the remaining elements equal to one so how do you find that basically that one is coming from gcd of some numbers okay it can like in this case it is coming as a gcd of three and four the two adjacent number sometimes three and four uh like uh, it's not three and four let's say the other example is three six two four so the three six two four what i'm trying to say let me just show over here three six two four so the gcd of three and six is three the gcd of six and two is two the gcd of this and this is two no matter no one is one right but when you again do an operation three and two gcd is one so now you get gcd equal to one why you get gcd equal to one in the second step not in the first step because if you do gcd of this 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 if you do three and six it will give you three but if you include these three three six two it will give you one okay so you have to see basically a sub array you know this was the whole question that uh, how you get the first one when you see a particular sub array and that sub array is giving you a one as a gcd so you can try to iterate on all the sub arrays you know that is n square time complexity i tried that only okay i tried that only to get on the all the sub arrays and and this is very you know n is very less so that makes this question very easy like you know uh, uh the this question can be done in o of n cube i have done it o of n cube but we can easily do it on o of n square also by using the space complexity of gcd okay what i'm saying by making a matrix of uh, where g of i comma j will store the gcd of elements between the i and j index i'm not storing it i'm just calculating it every time so that makes it so whenever you see a sub array so i'm saying that you should have the stored answer for gcd of particular sub array okay pre-computed answer so then you can do it on n square but here you don't need to do that so yeah n cube would work so see on or go on all sub array see whether this sub array can give you a gcd equal to one and it's not like you know go on all sub array is not like yeah this is also the thing you cannot just go on and the random like on any sub array make sure that you are going from size uh, zero size one to size n okay uh, so for what i'm saying that you know all check all the sub array of size one okay uh, but that would not be a case because all one would not be the case never because yeah we have already seen that now check the sub array of size two any sub array of size two will give you one so that means you get the answer uh if any sub array of size 2 cannot give you one then you only you move to three you know because you want to find uh using the minimum length sub array you want to find that one so that's what i did i iterated over the lengths uh, 2 to n and then all the sub arrays of this length and if the gcd is equal to one then you return uh why, why do you return this you return basically l minus one is the number of steps uh to make this sub array you know to take gcd of the sub array now you have one one now after that you have n minus one elements remaining and make it one okay just that was the thing and yeah it was a decent question yeah because fourth question i thought it is hard but it was not hard and the contest is still running we know that how many people have submitted when i submitted there was like already 1200 submission but yeah so that's the thing i think uh, this one was a nice contest and nice questions third one was a nice question fourth one was also a nice question but you don't have to you know just uh, think that if it is a fourth question it would be something like that or the as you can see like already 2000 submissions but yeah it was a decent one uh basically gcd uh basically what was you know the thing is you know you you know that you have to make one one at least some ones you have to make but not some ones just one one would be enough even if there are possibility to make you know two ones three ones in a single step or two steps right you will still make just one one because you know uh, you can try to do uh, that calculation on pen and paper you will see that uh yeah that only one uh single one can help you because uh, then you need just one operation for the uh, any other thing right you just need one operation for all the other indexes so why you do that operation on the another thing on uh, another basically if what i'm saying that if two six was giving me one three four was giving me one I would not do operation on three four and take one and do again operation on two six and give a tech one because then then also I have two more elements remaining. I've already utilized two operation and I will need four operations basically. That's what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So okay, guys, bye.